WatchOS 8 is the next major update to the Apple Watch, and it's coming out in a week or two. I've been using it for the past three months on my personal device, and I have some thoughts on what is actually useful in this update. So you can go to Apple's website, you can see all their marketing around it. You can see, I'm sure other videos will go through a laundry list of every single thing in the update, and those are great. I don't wanna do that. I wanna go through the five things that I think actually made me use my watch differently over this past three months so that you know what you should look forward to in the update. So let's jump into it. The most impactful changes I think this year in watchOS 8 are the updates to the always on display. So previously, if you had a series five or six Apple Watch, you know the always on display worked in the workouts app and on watch faces. Everywhere else, it fell back to this digital watch face thing that kind of just hovered over the top. It wasn't very useful for any case besides your watch face or workouts. Now, Apple's apps have almost all adopted it. Some haven't, but a lot of them have, and the ones that you probably want have done it. So the Now Playing app does it, the Maps app does it when you're doing navigation, the Timer app, the Stopwatch. A whole bunch of them use the Always On Display, and it's pretty darn great. Now, I was a little surprised at how stingy Apple seems to have been with privacy on these always on modes. So for example, in the Maps app, when my hands are on the steering wheel and I can kind of see the watch out of the corner of my eye when I've got my navigation up there, previously it would show me nothing. Now it shows me my next turn, but I can't actually see how long until that turn unless I turn my wrist to actually turn on the display fully. I don't quite know the explanation for that. I'm assuming it's a privacy thing, but I don't really know why that should be private. Yeah, uh, so that makes that mode a little less useful in maps, but in other instances, in now playing, in timers, and stopwatches, all clock-based things, it's much, much more useful. Uh, so like when I'm using a stopwatch, I can just kind of look at it, it'll show me the hundredths of a second as it goes, and a few seconds later the screen will fade away, but it'll still update every second and I can still see how things are going, and you can just tap the screen or turn your wrist to get back to the full mode. So in general, I think it's really good in Apple apps, but a few of them are a little more private than I would have expected. Now, what about third-party apps, you might say? Third-party apps do not get this by default, so any app that has not been updated will still show the kind of the placeholder thing that's been there for the last two years. But once they rebuild for watchOS 8 and are targeting watchOS 8, they will get a lot of functionality for free, and developers have the tools to customize the always-on mode with different colors, improve contrast, uh, do some of the privacy stuff to like hide things that they don't think should be on the always-on screen. They have the ability to do all that, so I would expect apps that you use on your Apple Watch to start getting those updates in the next couple weeks or months. Now, the second most impactful thing that I've noticed this summer is the ability to set multiple timers on the Apple Watch. So Apple Watch joins the HomePod as the only two Apple devices that support multiple timers. Yeah, I really wish the iPhone had this, but now on the Apple Watch, you can set as many simultaneous timers as you'd like. I got up to 20 and then just got tired of setting up new ones and kind of gave up. So at least 20 timers at the same time are supported. You can set these either manually in the timer app, or you can ask Siri to set them up. If you ask Siri to set them up, you can give them names. And so I've used this when I'm cooking to set different timers for different items that are baking, cooking, whatever. And it's been really, really useful. This is going to be great to have during Thanksgiving this year. I really love it, and I'm happy that Apple brought it to the Apple Watch. It's been one of the most impactful, I guess, the second most impactful change to the watch this year for me. All right, so the third thing is mindfulness. So this is the new mindfulness app, which replaces or subsumes, I don't really know, uh, the Breathe app that has been there for a couple years. So now when you launch the mindfulness app, it looks kind of like the workouts app, where you get a list of possible mindfulness activities uh, instead of workouts. And so there's only two of them right now, but there's the Breathe option, which is the same as before, but the mindfulness option is new. And it's kind of similar, but it kind of walks you through this meditation process that has haptics, it has prompts to make you think about things or not think about things. And it has some really cool animations to play on the screen. I don't know if I'm just going to enjoy this for the past few months and I'm going to fall off kind of like I did with the Breathe app. I liked the Breathe app during the review period when I that initially came out and then I kind of fell off in the coming years. Who knows how long I'll stick with this, but if you kind of like the idea of Headspace or Calm or those sorts of apps, but you don't want to pay for them, this might be a good way to get into the world of mindfulness and see if it works for you. And then maybe you can try a third party if you'd like, but it's really cool that Apple built this into the Apple Watch. Then number four is focus mode. So focus mode is coming to the iPhone, iPad, Mac, and the Apple Watch, and it does the least on the Apple Watch. 
But that doesn't mean I think it hasn't changed how I use my watch at all. So I have focus modes. I made a whole other video about this. I really recommend you check out. But in focus mode, I have things set up for I'm at work, I'm going to bed, it's the weekend. And I have these different modes where I want my phone and iPad to do different things. And on the watch, there's only so much extra you can do. A lot of those things around like notifications sync over to the watch seamlessly, so that's fine. But I want to change my watch face with focus mode, and that isn't something you can natively do in the focus feature today. But you can do it in shortcuts. So what I have going on is in the shortcuts app, I go to the automation tab, I can create a new one, and then I can say when my focus mode is set to something. And all my focus modes are here. I can choose weekend. When weekend is set, change my watch face to the typograph one, which is this minimal one that I really like the look of and is really calming and doesn't really ask anything of me over the weekend. So I like to have that one set on the weekend. And then while I'm at work, maybe I want a different one to set, have set. So I have another automation that says when I get to work, make sure the infograph modular one is set. So this is how I'm changing my watch faces with focus modes. It's not something natively built in. I really hope Apple does it because it's really nice to have your iPhone and iPad home screens change with your mode. It would be really great to see the watch face do that as well, but this is a workaround you can do for now. And the fifth and final thing I want to talk about today is the additions to text input that make things a little more flexible, a little easier to use. So over the years, Apple has added things like dictation, scribble mode, emojis. They've added these numerous ways to input text, input things to send other people. And they've all been kind of their own individual modes. You had to choose which one you're going to use. Now all of these live side by side. You can use them all. You can bounce back and forth. I can dictate part of a text message. Then I can scribble the rest of it. I can add an emoji onto the end. That all works really, really well. And again, I don't really find myself using text input on the Apple Watch a ton. I usually use dictation, but it is nice in those cases where it is something where I want to scribble it down. I want to send an emoji reaction and then like say like, thanks, smiley face. It's nice to be able to do that on the Apple Watch now when that is convenient for me. And they've also added the hashtag images app that you're probably used to on the iPhone. That's on the watch now. So if you want to send a quick reaction GIF, you can do that from your wrist as well. So that's pretty cool. So yeah, those are the three things that have been most impactful to me over the past three months using this update on my watch. Uh, if you've been using it or if you just installed the public version and you're enjoying different things, I'd love to know in the comments what you think is the most impactful. If you like this video, hit the like button. I will see you here next time. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.